All right, so we have our data. We have the ACS data in tabular form, and we have our GIS geography files. So now we're here in ARC, and we're ready to begin adding the data so we can start bringing it all together. So the first thing you always do in ARC is you make a connection to the folder uh, that has the data that you're going to use. So in the Catalog tab, I'm going to click on the Connect to Folder button at the top, and I'm going to scroll till I can find that um, folder that has the data. And so it's on my desktop, so it's listed right away, ACS Race. I hit OK. And now when I go to Catalog, I'll see that path um, added as one of the folder connections. So I'm going to expand that to see the contents. And I'm going to bring in the census data first, uh, the, I'm mean, sorry, the geography files for the census 2000 town towns. Drag that in here so we can take a look at it. And what we have here are the geography files, the polygon layer uh, consisting of the 351 cities and towns that make up Massachusetts. And one of the things that we're going to need to know about this data in order to use it properly is to see what it has in its attribute table. So I'm going to right click on the layer in the table of contents and open the attribute table. And so the attribute table shows us the data that, that, that it has for each of the features, each of the polygons, each of the towns in this layer. And we can see that it's got some basic information, including the town name, interestingly written both as all caps as well as uh, sentence style here and some other kind of cryptic looking columns and then some population data running from 1980 to 2010 uh, but our data is more up to date than that and then we even have some population change data and then a few other things like size and area of these uh, municipalities this is uh, important to inspect your data because uh, you always want to know what you're working with but secondly because we're going to be looking for a way to append the ACS census data to this table and so we need to find a column that the two tables share in common in order to accomplish that. So now I'm going to add the table that we've processed from the ACS data by going back to the catalog. Close this for a second. And we're looking for that CSV file that we created earlier. It's got the number 2 on the end. So I'm going to click and drag that over here. And I'm going to open that up to inspect it to make sure it looks right. That's what you always do when you add a table. And it just has a little bit of data in it, but it's got our total population and our white population. That's good. It's got the names of the communities as well, although they're formatted very differently um, because they also contain the county and state. Um, and this means that they're not going to be quite usable because there was nothing comparable in the other table. Um, we see two kind of cryptic columns here, GOID and GOID2. Uh, this looks like they have, might be unique IDs. So let's look at the two tables side by side so we can compare them because, again, what we're looking for is a column that the two tables share in common. So I'm going to right click on the poly layer and again open the attribute table and the table overlaps or the obscures the other table for a second. You see the two tabs are listed down here. So we want to look at them side by side so that we can look for a column they share in common. So in the upper left corner of the table, I'm going to click on the drop down and choose to arrange the tables vertically. And so now I can look at them side by side. I'm going to arrange the division a bit so I can see them both. All right. So the ACS uh, table, which is on the left over here, only has a few columns. Um, and the census 2010 towns poly attribute table has a bunch of them. But again, what we're looking for is a column that contains unique um, data that will be common to both tables in which there will be a one-to-one -one relationship so that there will be one record in the towns poly attribute table that matches one record in the uh, census uh, ACS data. So that's what we're looking for. And usually what that means is you're looking for nominal data rather than numeric or any kind of uh, ordinal data or something like that. You want nominal data. So usually IDs are the best if you can find them. So I don't see anything that looks like GOID and GOID2 from the ACS data in my city, uh, uh, Census 2000 Towns poly attribute table, but I do see something interesting here. These two columns in particular, if you compare them to this column over here, you should see that these numbers are concatenations of these numbers. Essentially though the 2500 is in front and then the other numbers follow. And that's great, that's exactly in fact what they are. So in order to join these two tables what we're going to need to do is to create a new column in the 2010 polys um, attribute table that concatenates these two numbers so that we can begin to join them. However, in addition to the numbers being the same, or not the numbers rather, the records having the same information and ideally uh, text information all the columns have to be in text. So we need to inspect those columns. So if we look at the FIPS STCO, which is a start, we see a problem already. It's, it's, it shows me statistics, which tells me that it's a numeric column, and that's not what we want. 
In fact, we go to the properties, we can also see that it's numeric, and it's specifically a long, which is to say it's a long integer, uh, which is a number, usually a number you do math with, not a number you use for IDs. The county sub FP10, or COUS sub FP10, if we click on that, statistics is grayed out, which tells us it's not a number, it's text. In fact, we go to the properties, and indeed it says string, string just being another word to mean text. And that's actually the format we wanted to be in. So this one's a problem, this one's okay. Over here on the ACS table, that GOID2, oops, it's also statistics, um, so that means it's a number. This one's a double, which means a double float. It's essentially uh, a, a column that can hold numbers with decimals and specifically large numbers. And again, we can't join these columns if they're in, they're in different formats. They have to be all the same, and ideally they should all be text. So we're going to have two things that we need to do. First, we need to create a column in the 10th, since it's 2010 towns, poly layer that um, concatenates these two numbers, but they have to be text too. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to convert this column into a text column, and then I'll concatenate them in a separate column. So the way that I do that is uh, with this table highlighted, okay, so I'm going to click on the top so the blue bar becomes darker. I'm going to go to the upper left menu over here, and I'm going to add a field. And I'm going to add a field, and I'm going to call this FIPS, oops, FIPS TXT for that one column, and I'm going to make sure it's a string or excuse me, text. We use those words interchangeably. And that one I noticed only had five characters of length of, of content in there, so that's probably long enough. And again, we're copying this, this one right here, and there's five characters. So now with that column created, I can copy over that data. So I'm going to right-click on that column, choose Field Calculator. It'll warn me that I'm editing out of an edit session, which means that I can't undo anything, but that's okay. And I'm going to find that column that has the data. It's at FIPS STHCO. I'm just going to double click, add into this lower expression bar. And all this does is basically where you would put formulas in. And this formula essentially says just take whatever the contents are from here. Now, because I've already set this up as a text only column, anything I put in there will automatically become text. So that'll solve the problem of that uh, the original column being numeric data. So I'll hit OK. And I'll take a second to copy over the data. All right, and there we have it. And I can right click on it, and sure enough, statistics is grayed out, which is good, means it's text. I can also tell by the justification. You'll notice the numbers are pushed up against the left hand col uh, edge of the column, whereas numbers are always pushed up against the right. So it's another quick indicator. All right, so now I need one more column so that I can take these numbers and concatenate them with these numbers. All right, so the original one had five characters, and this one also has five characters, so it only needs to be ten characters wide. You don't need to make them any wider than they need to be. So I'm going to go back to the drop-down menu on the upper left, add field, and I'm going to call this geo underscore ID 3. And I'm doing that because notice that this one's geo ID 2 over here. I'm going to create the same field over here when I get to this table, and that way we don't get mixed up. Again, make sure it's a text. I guess that's all we can work with. We only need 10 character spaces, so we'll change that to 10, and then we'll hit OK. And we see now we've got that column added, and so now we're going to concatenate the two numbers. Again, with these numbers going in front, just like they're over here. So I'm going to right-click, use the field calculator again, and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the FIPS text, because that goes in the front, plus and then that Q sub FP10. Now this expression uh, is not going to add anything because we're not dealing with numbers, we're dealing with text. So this expression is basically going to tell R to concatenate or push together the two sets of numbers. So hit OK. And there we go. Now they've been all in there. You can see they're just to the left. They're all text. That's pretty clear. No statistics. So this table is set up and ready to go to be joined to this column. But before we can do that, we still have a problem because this column is still numeric, so we need to convert that into a text as well. The problem here, though, is that we're still working off of the original CSV, and ARC doesn't typically like to work off of CSVs. It wants to work in another format. So we're actually going to have to convert the, um, this table into another format, like a DBF or database format. So I'm going to close this table, and this table over here, I'm going to right-click on it, go to Data, Export. We're basically going to make a copy of it. 
Um, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna rename it so I know what it is. ACS Rice. Okay. Okay. And it asks me after it makes it, do you want to add to the map? Yes. Okay. And this um, is this column, this um, table right here. Okay. You can tell the difference because this one has an extension CSV, this one does not. So I'm going to right click, open it, just inspect again, make sure it looks okay. All right, it's got all the same columns. We still have that GOID2 that we need to convert. All right, and the, the reason again that we export it is because we need to be able to edit the table, and ARC won't let you edit all tables, but this one it will let us. So we're going to add a column to this table, and we're going to call it just like in the other one, geo underscore ID3, and make sure it's a text. Again, we only need 10 characters. Hit OK, and there it is. And now this is even easier. We're going to use the field calculator to simply copy over that GOID2 data. Hit OK, and now it's in there. And so now we're ready to go. So the last bit here is we're going to be able to join the two sets of data here. Okay. So I'm going to close this table, and now, now that I've got the same column in both uh, this table here and in the Census 2000 Towns Poly Attribute table, I can join this table to that layer. And so because the layer is the destination, the thing receiving the um, information, I initiate a join on this layer. And so I right click on that layer and I'm going to go to join, join here. And then I'm going to walk through this wizard. I'm going to join attributes from a table. I'm going to base it on a particular field. And so it, it prompts you to say what field you want to base it on. And of course, we set up that GOID3 to do the join. I'm going to base it off of the ACS race DBF file that we just created. It automatically prompts me for GOID3 in that table because it sees that they're the only things that can contain matching um, types of data. And then I can choose whether I want to keep all the records or only the matching records. In this case, I want to keep only the matching records uh, because I don't want to bring over anything I don't need. And I also want it to tell me right away if it works or not. So I'm going to hit OK. And it'll ask me whether I want to index it. This is only an issue when you work with really large data sets. But I'll say yes. It doesn't hurt anything. Now, when I go to the attribute table for this layer, right click, choose Open Attribute Table, and I scroll to the far right, what I should see, aha, my data has been appended to the end of that um, attribute table, which is great. It's exactly what I want. And in fact, I can go ahead and start mapping it. 